It's what we're calling a tale of two cities. Uh, technically, I don't think they are cities. I'm not sure. Lanekli might be one. That's in Wales, where they're campaigning to stop their local hotel. Very nice four-star hotel, 250 quid a night, copper bars, really good-looking place called the Stardy Park Hotel. Uh, that is being descended upon by uh, hundreds of migrants. All the staff, 100 staff, have been sacked to re be replaced by cheaper workers. Uh, so a nice hotel, famous for weddings, with nice Nice restaurants has been turned into a sort of billet for migrants and the local community are not happy uh, and uh, they've been taken to the streets to try and stop this. Meanwhile, uh, in uh, near Bexhill in Sussex, there's a place called North Eye Prison, uh, which the government's spending uh, potentially £20 million to renovate and turn that into a migrant centre for more than a 1,000 people, more than a 1,000 asylum seekers. And that is in a very rural uh, area uh, where uh, the locals say they just haven't got the infrastructure to deal with this. So uh, let's go over, uh, we're going to go to, first of all, to from the North Eye campaign in Bexhill, uh, Jeff Newnham. Uh, welcome, Jeff. Hello there, Kevin. How are you doing? I'm very, very well. Uh, in a little Good. while, we'll go to Robert Lloyd. He's a spokesman uh, for the Action Committee in Lanelli. But I'm going to ask you first, Jeff, uh, explain to me, uh, for the benefit of the audience, exactly what's going on. There was a prison near where you are called North Eye, next to a very small village. Uh, it is essentially derelict, but it is rising phoenix-like from its ashes to become a massive migrant centre. And you say that your local rural community just does not have the infrastructure for, what is it, 1,200, 1,500 new residents. Uh, tell us about yeah, it. it uh, absolutely, Kevin. Much of what you said is very accurate there. Um, the 20 million to renovate it is inaccurate. It, it's going to cost them about 16 million to buy it and then they have to renovate it. This is one of the only sites, I believe it's the only site, that isn't actually owned by MOD or, or Crown. Um, so they've got to purchase this before they do anything at all. Um, you're absolutely right that it was previously um, a prison, a Category C prison. There were huge riots there when they tried to raise the number from 250 to 450, and that was back in the mid 80s. It was then owned by the UAE as a military training camp, but for the last 10 years, it's been disused. Um, there are some problems with uh, um, uh, asbestos and toxicology um, reports that have been done by the government. Um, as yet, although we put in a, a pre-action protocol um, about a month or so ago, because it's not owned by the Crown, by Home Office, um, they said we don't have to answer any of those questions, the pre-action. So we're, we're in a state of sort of limbo that we, we feel that something's going to happen um, they've said it's going to happen. They've delayed the starting point. Originally, it's 400 arriving by September. And according to themselves, they haven't yet bought the place. Um, so we don't really know where we are. Um, and that's the top and bottom of it. We put in a pre-action. They said we didn't have to answer. We put in freedom of information requests. They have asked an extension using uh, Clause 35 to that, which means they don't have to reply in 20 days. They give themselves another... Uh, I think it's now the further 20 days. They, they are getting back to us in the beginning of August with the information about our freedom of information. But the, the structure here, any of you that are familiar with um, uh, Bexhill on Sea will know that there's huge problems with sewage being pumped out. Um, so just on the very, very basics, our infrastructure... You just, can't you, just can't, you just can't take it. Let's uh, stay where you are, uh, Jeff, and let's go over okay. to uh, Robert Lloyd in Lanethi. Uh, are you there, Robert? Yeah, indeed, uh, Kevin. Hello, okay. good afternoon. Now, since we last spoke, uh, Robert, uh, hello to you. The um, uh, situation's got worse, hasn't it? By the way, is Lanethi a city? No, not yet, but perhaps okay. you should start a campaign okay, to make... So so I'm, think, but... I'm, going to I'm going to change this section to a, ta a tale of two non-cities. But anyway, a <laughs> bit, bit, bit of journalistic licence. Give me a break. Um, so the Stradi Park Hotel, lovely hotel, four stars, copper bars in the suites. It looks beautiful. Uh, I know the local community are very proud of it. There were 100 local people working there. They've all been fired. Uh, frankly, your lovely local community hotel is about to become 
a migrant centre. You've been, uh, your people have been demonstrating on the streets. I think I'm right in saying, Robert, that it's the same as with Jeff. Uh, you weren't consulted about this because the government, in order to set up these migrant centres, is using emergency powers it granted itself during the COVID crisis, which means they can override local concerns. They don't have to consult you. So this is being imposed on you. Where are you at with your protest now? Yeah, we're rather for, uh, forward than, than Jeff is. And if I've got a word of warning for Jeff, I mean, uh, be warned that in this argument with the Home Office and the partners they work with, they will stonewall you and they will lie to you. Um, I mean, we've had no consultation whatsoever on this plan. And news of the plan first leaked out on May the 24th, which is about eight weeks ago now. And there had been secret negotiations between the County Council and uh, what they call Clear Springs Ready Homes, who are the operators of these migrant sites for uh, the Home Office. Uh, those secret talks have been taking place. The County Council felt they were going nowhere and felt they had to leak the news. So May the 24th, eight weeks ago, was the first we heard of it. We mobilised quickly. Uh, we called a large public meeting. We formed an action committee. That action committee has been working really hard uh, to get to the nitty gritty what this plan is about. And uh, what you'll find, and a word of warning to say to Jeff, is that you will be obstructed all the way along the way. You will find it really hard to get information because they simply don't want to consult. I mean, the ideal plan for the Home Office and Clear Springs Ready Home is that they go into these hotels at 48 or 24 hours notice, they sack everybody, they move the asylum seekers in, and then it's a done deal before the local community can get 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 involved with it. I mean, here we we're actually quite lucky in the fact that the local community mobilized very quickly. Uh, we've sort of, uh, you know, we've really been got people behind the campaign. And this is a great uh, example. Have you stopped it, Robert? I mean, are, are there migrants in there now? Or, or? No, there, there are not at the moment. Now, what, what we've done... But, you, but, um, the, but the 100 staff or 95 staff have lost yeah. their jobs, which is an they, out... They, that's a scandal, <clears throat> an absolute scandal. And then, again, they, they lost their jobs. The, the owners of the hotel didn't have the decency to turn up to tell them they were being made redundant. Uh, the manager and the deputy manager received an email to say they were made redundant and were told to cascade the news to the rest of the staff. It's a shocking, callous way to treat staff. And they've been put on scrap heap. It's 95 full and part-time people. It's absolutely appalling. And now we're in the situation now where the hotel is actually under siege in a way now because uh, there's an area of land in front of the hotel where in order to protect their own interests, the owners of land uh, adjoining the hotel put fencing up. Now, what happened uh, basically about 10 days ago with the, the two owners of the hotel turned up themselves with bolt cutters and grinders to cut their way into their own hotel. That's ridiculous. Give access for well, clear space ready homes and for Delta so, Element. Robert, I'm going to I'll have to go back to Jeff for a second, Robert, because we haven't got too much time. Thanks for relaying that story to you. Uh, Jeff, a few warnings there from Robert there that you'll get nothing but uh, obfuscation uh, and uh, a lack of cooperation from the government. But uh, up at RAF Scampton, they have uh, successfully managed to get themselves a judicial review into whether or not that can be turned into a, a migrant centre. Uh, the government not happy about that. Are, are you uh, travelling down that path? Is there a chance you could get a ju judicial review about uh, saving North Eye Prison, as it were, from becoming a migrant centre? Yeah, well, this is it. The, the pre-action protocol is the, if you like, the housekeeping part of the paperwork. But you put that in because you will be going for a judicial review. We can only go for a judicial review and the pre-action protocol uh, when they actually own it. So at the moment, because they don't own it, we can't use the pre-action protocol right. or a judicial review, so we're waiting for that. But it's the hypocrisy of this, that the government are there supporting Ukraine against this oppressive regime, <laughs> whilst that is the, that point. mirrors their own modus operandi themselves. It's a you good know, point. It's, it's that hypocrisy. Absolutely.